G'day, and welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I want to do a video on muzzle brakes, or more poignantly, on the sound from muzzle brakes. Most people know um, that muzzle brakes make the rifle, make the report from the rifle sound louder. Um, and that's generally in a hunting situation where you don't want the volume or don't want to, uh, some people try and get away without using ear protection, still risks involved with that. Uh, but there's um, also at ranges, so shooting in an enclosed, whether it's a range or anywhere, an enclosed environment, then a muzzle brake will make things a lot louder. But I suppose I wanted to go through and do an actual test because there is really nothing in a muzzle brake that should amplify sound or make it louder. Um, that it should be redirecting the gases um, and but the bang should still be the largest sound that's going on the actual um, the explosion or it's not exploding but the the burning of the gas that that bang that happens there should be the loudest thing and I suppose then I stopped and thought about this a fair bit um, and there's is actually or my theory I suppose is what I started this process with is what's actually going on one is a reflecting, reflection of sound from being driven around by the fact that the gases and the sounds are being pushed to a slightly different place. Although that's not specifically how sound tends to work. The sound will emanate, sound waves emanate very evenly from wherever that spot is. But then there is extremely high pressures and gas flows and percussion and all sorts of things involved as well. So that percussion can be making sounds bouncing off objects and things as well. But then if you think about how a muzzle brake works, um, this is um, this is actually what I used for the test day. I used a, a Ruger Precision Rifle, which I've just put together. It's running in the 6.5 PRC, which is in the middle here. So a little short action magnum round in here, um, uh, pushing a 156 grain bullet at around 3,000 feet per second. Um, that's a 308. That's a 338. That's the 6.5 PRC in the middle one we used. And uh, this is the muzzle brake that I started with, which is the a fairly a sort of a, a slightly side port, slightly radial, the way they're designed, um, a little muzzle brake that I started with. I also did a test with no muzzle brake on the rifle to have a comparison. And then I put my muzzle brake on there as specifically because it's a very sideways muzzle brake. It tends, pushes a lot of the gas to the side. Um, it has a lot of panel to stop the everything going forward, but from the projectile, um, and potentially that could change what sounds going on but it, getting back to a muzzle brake and what you're likely to be listening to is that although it just stops gas from going forward and pushes it to the side to, uh, to enable the recoil reduction that a muzzle brake does that gas is traveling awfully fast it's like a hammer blow when it hits this steel so as much as we're not going to be able to discern any difference in the, 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 the timing, we're not going to hear two noises or anything, but that gas actually hitting here is going to have a sound of actually the gas hitting the muzzle brake. I, I don't suspect that that would be louder than the sound of the, of the muzzle crack of the, actual, of the actual round going off, but that'll be another sound. And that's really what I'm suspicious of. I'm suspicious that what actually we're listening to, what makes a muzzle brake seem or actually louder, and I shouldn't say seem louder because they certainly are louder, particularly in certain situations. Um, not something, by the way, that we experience most. There's a little difference, but it's not very noticeable out in the open field, especially with electric ear protection on. Not a huge difference on that side of things, but there is a difference. Much more notable in an enclosure where we don't shoot. But my, like, kind of getting back to what my suspicions very much were is that the noise is going to be the, is extra noise. You're going to get noise of the gas hitting the muzzle brake, and then you're going to get where that noise comes back to, and the things that can reflect off around you is what amplify the noises. So I suppose that's my suspicions that go with it, with all this. How was I going to test it? Well, the process I went through was. Um, I decided that I was going to set up a few muzzle brake, sorry, a few um, DB readers or, or microphones um, out in the field. 
Now I could go through, I suppose at later days, and go through and test this inside an enclosure, but then I'm going to be testing more, more what the enclosure does. And we, we all are aware that it gets a lot louder in there, and that's, that's going to be reflected noises in some form or other. That's what's going to be happening there. So I really wanted to test in the open, clear field side of things. So to do that, I have a couple of these little, um, I don't know, they're just a cheap off eBay um, decibel readers or noise readers. So th these things, um, I think, they're, what are they called? Mini sound meter. Um, they're just a little cheapy. I have checked them alongside. I use this sort of thing um, in my automotive workshop when I'm actually going through decibel readings on exhaust systems for licensing and that sort of stuff. Then I need to have those sounds. And I've checked these little systems alongside very expensive dB readers or sound meters. Um, and they, listen, they come up out the same bit slower. They haven't got as much many features and that sort of stuff, but they still some, come up with the same sort of reading. So I had a couple of these. The only thing with these, you re need to reset all the time. So they're only functional for me and Sam to use um, close to us so we could reset them and check each time. Um, and then I, there's just a simple phone app that I used for on, uh, on our phones, which I uh, could set up a couple of phones out in the field. Um, just I think it was DBX, but just a little app on there, which I then compared alongside this one, which I know these are about right, put it all four together, made a noise, they all came to the same sort of reading, so okay, it's close enough. I'm not going to call this a scientific test. This is just an approximation, <laughs> just three shots in, in every condition we were talking about, which I'll go through those in a minute. Um, where really they should have probably, you should probably do 50 shots or even different days and things to make sense of all that sort of stuff to do a scientific test. So this is far more just a, 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 a simple man's test is what we actually did here, but just to get an idea. So that's what we did. That's the equipment we used. The next bit that I'd say is the way we set it all up is I actually had the um, one of these on me and Sam. So I had one with me as the shooter. Um, Sam had one. She was in a way about 10 feet, about three meters away from me to, the, to my left hand side. That was simply in what I'd call an observer position. Spider position, it's a different thing. It's more in my little cone. So I really consider the one I had on me to be that reading. And then she was more in an observer, observer position just to the side. Then we had the first phone or that DB reader, that sound meter, out at approximately 150 meters, so 150 yards, 150 meters, out straight in line with the shot. So it's going to be shooting over the top. I was shooting about the 450 um, meters off into the distance there. So the you know uh, uh, coming up into the 500 yards is where I was shooting out um, over the top. But I wanted a sound place where it could capture what was actually coming forward. Um, Going any further would have simply diminished the sound a little bit, obviously the further away, but I also was going to be going over a crest and I didn't want to have that below the crest. I wanted to have it so I could hear all the noise that was coming for it. Then I put another one of those out at 90 degrees to, to our left. Didn't really matter left or right. That was the way I could go where it get clean listening to the rifle. So there was one over to the left. So that was it. And then a couple of shots over the top of that um, to get the readings for all four mics. And then I moved the shot to 45 degrees to the side. Similar sort of distance to the shot, but it's just shooting out 45 degrees to the side. That meant out of a couple of shots there and a couple of shots there is I was going to get readings of um, basically straight in front to 45 degrees to 90 degrees and then around to 135 degrees. So a reasonable arc of where that sound was coming from. And then with me on the rifle and then like I said, observer position. So that's the test we did. Um, I'd stress again, not scientific, not enough samples to say much more than a general um, anecdotal um, noise reading. So it's really more a, a generalizing and circumstances could have changed that. If we did a lot more shots, then okay, you can start to rule out circumstances and come back into more your averages, but still as an idea. Okay, here you see us going do, doing that shooting, um, a couple of shots in every position in every condition. So that was with the RPR muzzle brake on, so the Ruger Precision muzzle brake on, that was with no muzzle brake on, and that was with the 4AW. Um, or our one, which is used not as a sales feature, used very much as because it's a very wide muzzle brake. Um, and I suppose the other thing I would say is between the Ruger one 
it's actually sized to suit a, a, a 30 cal projectile. Still gonna be as efficient, but it's a slightly bigger hole in the middle, so maybe that changed things a tiny bit. That whereas the one I was using on the 4AW one um, is sized for the 6.5. So I don't think that actually is gonna make any difference whatsoever, but okay, potentially, is there some differences there? So as you see, we went through and did those tests in all those conditions, and that's just a snapshot of what we actually did there. Um, on the table here, you can see what we actually saw. For the, um, both close to, both me and, and Sam, so both the shooter and the observer, the, there really was not a discernible difference. I think it ended up with one decibel difference um, close to us, which I really couldn't say that was anything, uh, but there was one decibel difference. The loudest being the 4AW one, um, the quietest being the, um, the open rifle. Um, to our ears, it's much more noticeable. When it came to downrange at the 150 meter mark, there did seem to be a cleaner winner there. The broader muzzle brake, our 4AW muzzle brake, being broader and maybe the smaller diameter bore, but certainly the broader side of things makes some sense of restricting the noise traveling down there. And that was a clear winner in that side of things. The other two, the, the Ruger muzzle brake or the more radial style muzzle brake and the no muzzle brake were very, very similar at that distance. And then we went over to the 90 degrees side of things, which means that that was either 90 or 135 degrees. Then the clear winner in that situation was the no muzzle brake. And the, the two muzzle brake ones, both were similar over to the side there, which would make sense as they're pushing a bit more volume to the side of things. So listen, that's, well, you, you see the test, you see what it is. They aren't actually louder. The muzzle brake isn't actually louder at the shooter. And of course, our ears tell us that it is louder. What my um, determination of this testing actually was telling me is all I was actually measuring was peak volume. So the peak volume is exactly the same. There is some extra sound created by, and I think a couple of things that we're actually talking about, which is um, not more volume, there's just more of sounds. There's more sounds because when the gas actually hits the muzzle brake, that is making a sound. That is like a little hammer blow, bang, of metal, of, of really high speed gas hitting the steel. That makes a sound. Um, so that's not louder than, than the, the, the muzzle blast or the actual crack of the round going off, but there's more sound. There's also the fact that sound is getting pushed around in extra places. So there's more percussion of, that's coming out. It might not be coming to the shooter, but it's going somewhere. And then anything around that is going to reflect that sound back. So lumps on the ground even are going to reflect that sound crack. Certainly once you're in an enclosure, like a range, like a shooting range, you're in a shed or things like that, then that's going to reflect from everywhere. So that's the actual extra sound. It is both where the sound's being pushed to a certain degree, but it's also this extra sound of the gas hitting the muzzle brake, actually hitting inside of it, which you can actually hear. It's not a suppressor. It's not got anything capturing that sound. It's actually open to hear. So not so much louder as in just more sound. And as for the downrange, actually there is actually seeming at least for this little test, a little less range, a little less sound downrange. So I suppose the last bit I'd do, what does that advice do for anyone? Um, or that, that um, information do for anyone? Listen, it is just sort of filling in the blanks as to why things are. Um, the, the big deal with muzzle brakes and ranges largely they're unpleasant for other people. They're not terrible for the shooter, but they're unpleasant for other people. And certainly when you're inside an enclosure, it starts to get bad for the shooter as well. When you're dealing, no matter what your ear protection is, once you get too much of that, that's going to wear you down. You sort of have a, a time limit on how much the ear can listen to things and it's going to be pushing the boundaries. So the big deal is when it comes to a shooting range, that sort of stuff, largely a smaller caliber a, and no muzzle brake is a far more enjoyable way for everybody to do that side of things. The big ones are made for out in the field um, and then there's no enclosures, no bits and pieces around us. Um, and to be honest, in shooting, we largely shoot like that and it's really not a, a, a discernible feature. There is a difference between shooting no muzzle brake and shooting a muzzle brake, but it's in the, in the sound side of things, but it's not a huge one when there's very little to reflect back at you. Anyway, I hope that was of um, some interest to people. It certainly was of interest to us. 
um, you probably could with uh, with a lot better metering system go through and show all those those sound the different sounds you're actually listening to high speed sound recording and uh, it's probably able to break it down I couldn't swear by that but that would make sense we've got a lot of noise filling with the likes of the, the, the baffles being hit by the gas and the percussion that's coming out that actually makes them seem louder where in actual fact the the meters said no no they're not they're not louder they're just more sound. Anyway, hope that makes some sense. Thank you very much for checking in and we'll catch you next time.